So I'm going to ask you this question, being a constitutional and a public uh, law practitioner, I'm sure that's very different from the kind of lawyers we are used to largely, well, most of us are used to dealing with, which is the MA guys, the corporate guys. Even on the litigation side, there's more corporate commercial dispute uh, sort of lawyers that we meet with rather than those who work in the, in the spheres that you do, right? And, and for the kind of law you practice, I'm actually very curious to ask you, how do you draw the line? You know, when, when do you sort of say that, okay, this is it, I'm not going to get involved uh, anymore because for the kind of law you practice on a daily basis, I'm sure you're very invested. And also the outcome is something that you're highly, highly attached to because it's, it's going to impact somebody's very basic right, perhaps, like you said, right? So how do you manage? Firstly, do you manage to stay sort of neutral and, and slightly detached? And if you do it, then how do you do it? You know, Tanisha, in every case that we do uh, uh, as a chamber, whether it's a human rights case, whether it's a constitutional case, whether it's a commercial case, we put in everything, right? Everything. We work incredibly hard. And, um, and I'm, uh, uh, I'm tough, you know, on myself, on my team. And I'm very clear that we all have to bring our best games to the table, like our best games, right? Um, but, and also our killer instincts. Mm. But once you put everything in, that idea of nishkama karma, which means work without desire for reward, mm -hmm. um, the idea, the philosophy is that it has to be gained. That's, that's an old case, but you know, because I love winning. I love winning, right? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. But, but the idea is that like you put in everything and then, it, you know, everything in the world is not going to be up to you, sure. right? You, you win some, you lose some. So you're essentially saying do what's within your control and then just sit back with a hands-off approach and, and see how it sort of unfolds. No, but do literally every oh. single thing, every single thing that is under your control. You know? right. Yeah. right. But tell me, like, I'm just curious. Every single ethical thing. I mean, that should be taken for granted, you know. <laughs> no, with, with it is in these days, but it should be. Yeah. Knowing who you are and, and the reputation that precedes you, I don't think you need to clarify that at all, Karuna. The, the ethical is, is an understood. So, but I'm actually still, I'm still going to probe this a little bit and I'm still very curious. So for example, you're working with say a victim of, uh, for the sake of example, and I'm sorry that, you know, I do want to work with an example. So I'm going to take this one on. Let's say you're working with a victim in a rape case, right? Every night that you're going to bed, you've, you've sure you've read the law, you've looked at the evidence, you you know, your team's put together their best foot forward. But when you're going to bed that night, are you thinking, I really hope we can nail this one? Or, you know, like, that, do, you, do you obsess over it a little bit? Is there a tendency to do that? Of course, all? absolutely. I obsess about it all the time. <laughs> you do. But you also, but you also, there's, see, there's lots of studies to say that if you uh, sleep on something, then there's a way in which your brain processes and settles the idea and prioritizes what's important and what's not. Now, this is very important in the law, right? Because you've got like a ton of information and you have to prioritize what's important and you have to prioritize what you think is going to appeal to the judge and all of that. You have to sort of structure it in like your mind has to structure it. Right. Um, I also think it's very important to take a step back and just think about the case. Okay. And this is, I think for arguing counsel, this is incredibly important because once you've read all of that information, you know, you know, all of that law. And I am a great believer in due diligence. So when I was younger and I was, uh, I'd just come into the Supreme Court, I was, yeah, I was in my uh, sort of mid twenties, I think. And I had, you know, I had opportunity to argue before various additional solicitors general, uh, uh, et cetera, in various, particularly tax cases. Somehow there were lots of tax cases. Okay. And, um, I used to read every single word, you know, and I still try to read every single word. Sometimes I have to rely on um, uh, chamber associates, colleagues who will, but I still try to read every single word for myself. Right. Um, 
and some of my colleagues at the time used to say oh you know i only spend an hour on an slp and then i just go in and i say two words to the court and i actually think that's deeply negligent behavior because the um and i'm not making bones about that because i think that the judge could turn to page so and so and i've one cases on precisely that right and say well what about this and then the other person doesn't know and honestly and uh, obviously i'm not going to take names but when we've been up against people who we know don't read and we know don't know their stuff <laughs> this is the strategy we employ right correct that's an yeah. empowering strategy yeah i'm sure yeah understood okay that's that's insightful and and do you ever get into the righteousness of a matter like do you do you ever sit back and say hey do you think this is right or wrong do you ever sit down oh, you do oh, yeah, yeah. and but does that impact how you look at the case or how you work towards it <clears throat> you know we have this thing in my chamber where i uh, when we're preparing for the case when we're prepping for the case so we all sit together and i run my arguments by my team and if we have time then some people uh, go for and some people go against right so it's a moot court and the feminists will argue the the sort of stronger feminists will argue for the uh, rape accused mm-hmm. and the uh, the others will argue for just for the, the purpose of that exercise right mm-hmm. will argue for the complainant or the prosecution and i think that's very important as lawyers because even if i wouldn't take the case of the rape accused unless i was 100% sure you know and yeah it doesn't go by the cab rank principle but i think there are many many deep problems with the cab rank principle right um you've got to anticipate the arguments on the other side right and the thing is that you know particularly in human rights we see that people are so excited and swept along by the righteousness of the cause they forget to look at the law you know you can't do that you can't do that because the cause is important you can't not look at the law correct your the, the duty on you to do due diligence is that much stronger you know 